It is time for Flames Unfiltered. I'm glad join alongside Kyle Lewis. And it seems like it's been, it's been a long time since we talked about Flames Hockey. Yeah, it felt like it felt like the queue up. Yeah, the queue up to record felt longer, but I'm like, maybe I just don't remember this correctly. (laughs) Nothing's changed yet. We'll we'll show some new stuff come September once we kind of kick off season six of the show. That's hard to believe. Yeah, it's uh, it's been crazy, man. Like just life in general has been absolutely nuts. I mean, and there actually has been a fair bit of Flames news that we uh, will have to cover, but. Nothing like earth shattering or super pressing, but we got a lot to talk about. We got we got some different things we want to talk about. We're gonna one thing we're gonna do today. It's kind of in a tradition. I think I think it's probably the year five we've done this, where we just kind of roll through some player grades. We're not gonna spend a ton of time on it because uh, it's I don't know that it does a whole hell of a lot of good to like dwell on the past from last year. I, I like forward thoughts right now with this organization, but. I think it's good to kind of evaluate the guys that we need to evaluate for in their future with the team. Um, so Kyle and I are going to go through some player grades, but uh, that's one thing. And then we'll just roll through some, shoot, just some random flames talk. Yeah. Yeah. we got a few different things. Um, some ownership, you know, movement, so to speak. Yeah. Um, the Wranglers are done. I mean, that was fairly recent out to Coachella. Like, they are. They let me pull that up here. They went down. They lost three games to one. They won game one, four to one. Lost four, three, seven, five, and three zero. And Coachella Valley uh, moves on, and the Wranglers are done. Hmm. Yeah, as I said, I think on our last show too, that pretty much spells the end of the AHL careers of quite a few people. Um, Do you think it really does? Okay, so let's let's talk about some of the key guys. So Klapka has seven points in six games. Do you view Klapka as an NHL regular? I'm not sure yet. I'm not sure yet. I think he could be. Um, he has some of the tools for sure, but he'll be an interesting one to watch in training camp. Where are you at on him? I don't see it happening. As much as I liked him, and I, and I, 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 I like some of the aspects, he was just so underwhelming in in his nhl games that i and i hate to say that because i like some of this the tools he brings to the game i just i don't see it let's put it this way if he's an everyday nhl for us we're in trouble presumably um but i mean it could also be a late bloomer and i mean when i say late bloomer i don't mean in terms of you know this guy's gonna be like a top six forward i mean he could be effective in a in a lesser role potentially i mean he had a really good playoff so he did. Coronado has six points, a goal, and five assists. Is Coronado cracking this lineup next year? Mm, I think so. Although a goal, and yeah, I would expect more goals from him. Um, he, but he has to have a big summer because he he was kind of penciled in by me and many others last season, and clearly wasn't quite up to snuff. So we'll have to see. He's a, he's going to be a tweener. He'll be one of the last cuts if he doesn't make it. I think he's fully capable. I just don't know if maybe a little bit more time in the American Hockey League doesn't help, but we'll see. This summer is super critical for him, and uh, I think it could go really either way. Yeah, Cole Schwint, four goals in six games. I like. I like to see that. I'm still not penciling him as an everyday NHLer yet, but I like. Yeah, but you're stuff. you're relatively high on him. I like. Um, I was. I, I was when the trade first happened, but I'm I'm not quite so sold now. But. Um, it'd be interesting to see how it plays out. I mean, there's also like, there's a lot of things happening in terms of like the farm vets. Like, I don't think Estelle is going to be back in any role. And I don't think, I think Sutter's likely going to retire. Unless they'll be looking for a new captain potentially with the Wranglers. So there's going to be some, like some role shuffling too, right? Yep. Yep. So I think we'll have to see what kind of vets they align that roster with and, and who, like when you look at, uh, even like even the NHL roster, like there's, there's some space there. Right. So, a couple more couple guys, guys I just want to touch base on. Jeremy Poirier has four points, a goal, and three assists in six games. Yeah. I like what I saw there. I really yeah. liked what I saw there. It's going to be an interesting and, and critical summer for him, as it is for every one of these guys at the AHL level. Jacob Peltier, yeah. three points in six games, one goal. I still have a mixed review on that one still, but uh, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. He's definitely going to get 
a fair shake. I really believe that. I really believe he's going to get a fair shake. Oh, I think so too. I mean, as far as Poirier goes, he, I think he missed way too much time this past season to develop his game defensively enough to play the NHL level. I, I'd be surprised and could be surprised. Um, I think you'll see some NHL time next year, but I don't think you'll see him as regular quite yet. Now, a funny one, and then we'll move off of the Wranglers, but Dustin Wolf um, had some games that were really shaky, like really shaky. Mm-hmm. But when you look at his overall statistics, uh, you know, pretty good. The point nine two four save percentage for the playoffs. So yeah. it's it's a kind of a reversal of the roles because in the NHL this year, his numbers were not great, but everybody was like, oh, no, he's he's still good. He's good. We got to give him, you know. But now his numbers are really good, and, and we he has some questionable outings in the playoffs. I shouldn't say questionable outings. Um. I don't know. One one real struggle game. I guess that's probably the best way to put it. Other than that, yeah. probably adequate. No, he's, he was he played excellent. Otherwise, I mean, even his NHL time, like he was generally quite good down the stretch. There was a few games where, mind you, just a few games he had no help as well. Yeah. But I don't think there's anything left for him to do at the HL level. I mean, you, you kind of run with him and you know as as a backup. Oh, or, I think me and you've nailed this one. Let's just have him and Marks from split time. Like I think me and you've nailed it with this one. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how much of a split it's going to be necessarily, but uh, and that's assuming Mark comes back to the team next year. But Wolf basically has to be the initial roster because I think based on his pedigree and everything he's already done, like if he wasn't, I wouldn't be surprised if you know his agent or he said, you know, maybe it's time to look for a move because I don't think there's anything else made to prove. Oh, I think there is. There's a big difference of being an American Hockey League goalie to an NHL goalie. That's, that's what I mean, though. But he has, no, he has nothing to prove at the AHL level. Like what? I, what else do you want him to do? Like when? When the Calder Cup all on his own? Like just? I don't know. I, I think I, I'm done with him in the HL. I guess that's my point. I, I'm 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 ready for him to to get his chance in the NHL. I just I don't I don't feel as I mean I feel like he's fully capable of it. I just don't feel as confident as a lot of the fan base does. I yeah. just think you got to be confident. That's that's the time to give him the oh for the sure. Ice time. Right now is definitely the, the time. Every time I, but you got, you still have Jacob Markstrom and he can learn a ton from Jacob Markstrom. Mm-hmm. I don't think this is a, a, a situation where we need to put in Wolf for 62 games and have Markstrom sit and, and mentor him for 20 games. I, I don't, I don't, I don't think that. I also don't think this is the right time to have Wolf Ladar go and boy, that would scare me a little bit too. I, I think he can learn a lot from Markstrom for one year and then, then, then we move forward, right? Yeah, well, I mean, it's, it's the right trade out there for Markstrom, and that's, that's what's going to be what happens, right? I mean, I think one thing we learned this past season is Markstrom and the Flames are no longer married to each other. A lot changed since 2022. You know, yeah. like it was, it was uh, it's two years today since Goudreau's overtime winner, right? Um, yeah. yeah. You know, and this is this is a team that, and uh, I think Robert Munich had something up best on, on X. It's like, this is the team we expected to contend for the next three to five years, and instead it was... It blew up, and I think he actually said something to the effect of like 2022 will go down as the worst offseason in Flames history. And um, but think about it though. Think of a worst uh, we're talking off season, not like the Gilmore trade or things like that. But in terms of off season, you'd be hard pressed to find a worse one in terms of where they were and where they went, right? Oh yeah, but I mean, it's not like this is. I don't know. I maybe I'm going to get crucified for defending management in this. I'm like, what was he? What was Trillian even supposed to do? Like Goudreau up and left on him in uh, the final hour. Mm-hmm. He, Kachuk but, says, peace out, I'm out of here. He got a hell of a return for Kachuk. I don't care what anybody says. You take Uyghur off this team and where are we at? Yeah, no, for sure. But I mean, like, as far as the Goudreau thing goes, and you know, we're not going to get too much revisionist history here, but like, we don't know all the facts about what, how that negotiation went down. We know what Tree Living said. Um, we don't. I don't. At the end of the day, no, it doesn't, it doesn't matter what he was doesn't matter what he's supposed to do or wasn't supposed to do. It has nothing to do with it. The point is, it was an awful offseason. Well, quite honestly, I, do you want Johnny Gaudreau right now? I don't want Johnny Gaudreau playing like he's playing right now. He'd be overpaid, just like Jonathan Huberto. I don't want I don't, the Johnny I, I Gaudreau that we watched last year. I don't. I, I, I don't. That's not the one you'd have, though. I don't believe. I hope not. But no, we had that. It's, it's a moot point, but I don't. Yeah, I don't yeah. believe so. I, I mean, none of us. None of us thought the Calgary version of Huberto, right? Is what we're gonna. We thought we we're gonna get the hundred point guy, or maybe yeah. the eighty point guy. I think was probably the reasonable expectation, right? 
think we would have all been happy 80 to 80 to 90 points. I think I think, I think we said all. that a few times in the last two years. You know, if we had the Jonathan Huberto we had from January to the end of the season, the last two seasons, we might not love the contract, but we wouldn't talk about as much as we do. No, you're right. You're right. You're, you're right. But it's so it's so weird. Even like right now, like I look to my right, my flames calendar for the month of May is Elias Lindholm. Like so many changes, like so many changes. Yeah, but you know what? We're kind of we're kind of we're, and it's not just this fan base. Every fan base is somewhat hypocritical too, because we for so long were like, I, "The core is not winning. Change the core." And then we change the core, and it's like, "Well, we're still not winning." <laughs> well, they mean they kind of had to change the core. They weren't given an option, right? Well, I mean, the core. I mean, we always forget. You know, we always we always. Um, think back to the the Friday night in July when the major trade went down, or the few days before that when Gaudreau walked. Right, but you know this didn't start right then. You know we we often forget Giordano having to go in the in the expansion draft, and I'm not saying that Giordano changes anything here, but he was a key piece of this team, an aging key piece, but but yet a key piece of this team that we could have got two more good years out of. Along with what does that change the thought process for Gaudreau, Kachuk? You know, I we don't know that. There's so many unknowns, right? But we yeah. we we think back to the the trade night or the or the Gaudreau uh, non sign as the 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 turning points. I, I think it started slightly before that um, with Giordano going, and then the dominoes, you know, then Monahan, you know, then Monahan's out and then da, 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 da. And it, it, you know, it's really a lot of a players. And, and this year kind of hopefully cap that off with, uh, you know, losing of the, of the four UFAs, you know? Yeah. Well, I mean, some of those guys too, like the team was better after Giordano, Giordano left surprisingly. Um, the team was doing really good when Monahan was on the shelf pretty much the entire season or big mm -hmm. chunks of it or ineffective when he played. I mean, um, could you imagine you know, what we in, though, if we could have had a Giordano in that group and a healthy Monahan, but do we can yeah. sit and speculate on what we could have been for. Well, it's long. funny how it's changed though. Like the talk, I mean, obviously Giordano is essentially aged out of the league at this point. He couldn't get into a playoff game and I suspect he's going to move into a player development role with Toronto. And then Monahan is probably looking at his biggest payday since he signed his last contract in Calgary, right? Somebody's going to give him another no, show me deal for like five no, million. I don't, I don't, I don't necessarily know how I would feel if this happened, but having him slot down the middle for us right now would be great. <laughs> I can't imagine he'd go back to Calgary after the way they ousted him, but that was also a different regime. So, but you know, what, though, talk about we it. Don't, like, again, though, we don't know the inside there. I mean, there was probably a lot of discussions where it maybe was handled very cordially of like hey like there's no way that this is gonna heal right now here like this is probably better for your career and, and maybe who knows maybe he said hey move me out right now so i can get a fresh start and see what happens we we have no idea uh, we speculate anyway i don't think he's gonna sign back in calgary but wherever he goes i wish him well i wish he had a long run with winnipeg but i don't think so either well you know we just spent 10 minutes of speculating about the past i hate talking about well, we're going to talk about the past some more because we're going to talk about some player grades. So, should we go right into that? Let's go into that. It may as well. This this should be kind of fun. It'd be fun. We're not going to spend a a super a ton of time. Um, we'll just kind of roll through it. Let's start with the goalies. Um, we got three of them to talk about: Markstrom, Vladar, Wolf. Um, why don't? We, well, let's just go. Let's go with Markstrom first because he was our starting goalie this year. Uh. I, I actually like the play of Markstrom this year, and uh, albeit after trade deadline, his, his play dropped a little bit. But I would say he was a B plus goalie for the year. That's funny. As soon as you said albeit, I thought like my grade a B. Wouldn't quite yeah. give him a B plus. He was he was suspect at a few points in the season where it really needed him to be better. And there's also times he was fantastic. So I think overall yep. he had a very fair, fairly average season. You know. Yep. No, that's. A little bit above average in the fact, and anyway, we both gave him a B because I I don't know how you consider grades. I I consider C as like average, what we expect, right? Yeah. 
And then I look at B as like, hey, a little bit better, you know, because he was in some Vesna conversations, not saying he was ever going to win it or a serious yeah. conversation or anything like that. I'm not saying jumping any conclusions there, but I mean, a solid player for us this year and and one that, uh, I don't know, had a pretty decent year for this team. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, nothing. I mean, nothing to call home about, but nothing terrible. And there were stretches. He was brilliant. So, yeah. Dan Vladar, where do you see him? Uh, I wanted more. I mean, C plus, I'd say wasn't, you know, a write off. I mean, the injury didn't help, but I mean, I think he kind of, you know, solidified himself as a career backup when I thought he might've been like maybe a one B at one point, but I'm not, I don't really so much believe that. Where are you at on him? I kind of thought he was a one B too. I was really high on him and, and I'm not, I haven't written him off. Um, I mean, not maybe in Calgary, but at league wide, of course. Yeah. Um, I would just say he was a C. He was just kind of, he was just kind of there this year. Yeah. He was just yeah. And I think, you know, he kind of, some of the luster and the shine, I mean, all, all of that went to Wolf. Um, and it, it's hard to grade them the same way because, you know, you're talking about, you know, veteran goaltenders and a young goaltender yep. and expectations. So, you know, to move on to Wolf, I'd give him a B plus because I think he showed kind of what you'd expect in his first pseudo NHL season. Um, but he, you know, we'll see where he goes next year, but I thought he could, he struggled at times. Like you thought he might, he played really well. Like you thought he was lateral movement was fantastic. Mm-hmm. Shelled a time or two, but overall I think his trajectory is about what you'd expect. I didn't think he was going to come in and necessarily be lights out. So um, yeah, I give him a pretty, pretty solid B plus on him. I, I was, I was wavering between a C plus and a B. And yeah, I'm still no B minus. <laughs> no, I don't even. I don't give much difference. Um, I'm kind of back and really, forth. A lot of the guys in this team had a lot of them. <laughs> yeah, I think we should. Yeah, uh, you know, I, 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 I would consider myself a, a realist with Dustin Wolf, and and I, I, if if right now, five years from now, we're sitting there talking about him. Um, with the likes of some of the the better Flames goalies, I can only think of two good ones. But, um, I, I, you know, I think he's got every bit of potential to be, to be a great NHL goalie. Um, I also would not be completely shocked if he struggled and and faded out of the league. I mean, he's really at a crossroads, and and, and that's where goalies his age are. Um, yeah, he's a seventh round draft pick. Uh, he's done everything you could possibly do in any league he's played in, which is a hell of a pedigree, which for me gives him the upside that the sky's a limit, right? Yep. Yeah. And I think that it still is. I just got to see him for a longer period of time. Like I, I just, I, I don't know how, you know, I'm going to give him the, you know, the C plus B grade because. Man, I, I don't know. Like, I, I don't, is it even fair to judge him at twelve games or whatever he got this year? Like, is it fair? I, I don't even know. No, like I said, I think he did what we, what we hoped he would do with the time he had for the most part. I, so. I would agree. I would agree. Yep. Uh, Next, he, he did one thing. He didn't do one thing that I kind of prayed he would do, though. But I, I, I kind of prayed he came in and and made all of us believe that Jacob Markstrom was expendable. Oh, I don't think that was going to happen yet myself, but I can understand where that hope comes from because I'm sure at one point I was hoping that might be the case. But we all hope, we, you know, we hope and dream as a fan, right? Yeah, well, it's all hope and sports. <laughs> Defenseman, uh, we'll cruise through these also. Let's start at the top, man. Mackenzie Weger. A, I gave him an A too. How yeah. do you have? I don't know. I, you, you can't really ask for much more than what he did. There's a couple of stretches where I thought he was not fantastic, but the rest of the season he was. He was you know, 20 goals over 200 blocks, like all yeah. situations. I mean, really should have had more power play time, especially early in the year, but you can't. He, he's my choice for captain if it was up to me, quite frankly. I don't judge captain on how they play. I, I judge captain on how they are. Well, that's what I mean. That's how he is. He's a, he's the full package. So yeah, I, I, but I but but I I feel like you know I'm not saying that you're wrong on that. I just feel like we're sliding Michael Backlund because when I look at Backlund, I don't think he did anything wrong this year as a captain. I didn't do anything wrong. I just think that you know if this is a very different team than many of the iterations that Backlund's played on, and I would have gone with a a newer voice in the room if it was my decision. But I'm not upset at all about Michael Backlund being captain. Yeah, uh, yeah. Rasmus Anderson. 
That's a hard one. I didn't like his season. Um, I thought he was largely ineffective a lot of nights. I mean, put up some points, but I <laughs> C plus. I gave he him. Was, I gave him a straight out C. I mean, he was just kind of. I don't know. He left me. I feel like Vladari was just kind of there. I mean, I don't, I don't remember yeah. a season in his career where he was where he was less noticeable. He had a couple games where I just was like, "Man, is this guy all there tonight?" He yeah. just looked. I don't know. He just had a couple rough goals. Yeah, he had, uh, he had a really, really not great season by his standards. Now, sadly, when we get through Uyghur and Anderson, we get through a hodgepodge of ugh. Yeah. Well, some of them are gone, and I, I, we'll, we'll throw on. I don't on, think we're even going to really grade Shillington either. Why not? Other than, well, how the hell? He barely played. I mean, he came back, and he was what he was before, so give him a high what, grade if you what, want, but. Was he that? Was he better than or the same as he was before? Yeah, with a hell of a lot. I think he was bad. Team, right? I'm sitting here. No, he just had much less of a team in front of him than when he played for the Flames last time, right? Probably putting he's, he played 32 games, which is more than we all thought, right? 17 minutes ice time. I, you know, I, probably not. Probably a difficult. It's like again, like Wolf, a difficult grade to give. I, I, I said a C. He was fine. You know what? For coming back from what he did. Pretty damn good, right? And yeah, I'd give him a B. I think just skip ahead here just for one second. As he was, um, he, he was um, a nominee for the Bill Masterton Trophy along with Frederick Anderson and the eventual winner, which was just announced here a little bit ago, Connor Ingram of, of the Arizona Coyotes. He went on to win that award, but um, that's quite an honor. That's an award um, for players who best exemplify the qualities and perseverance of sportsmanship and dedication to hockey and you know the road that Shillington had boy I mean we all applaud him and uh I I I want nothing more than him to re-sign at a at a a team-friendly deal yeah where he comes in and works his way back into being a a top four defenseman because God knows we need one right now no it's most people's expectation at this point. So, but and I, I think more he's here. Full, I, think he's capable. Can, I think he can do it. Oh, it absolutely is. Yeah. Still relatively young. He's got all the tools to do it. Just we'll see what happens. Now we're going to roll through these next five really fast. Six really fast. Yeah. Gilbert. I say D. Uh, he had an injury. I give him a C. I thought he was okay. I didn't think it's not his fault. He was pressing over his head. He's, he's a tweener. Always has been. I know. He was. Yeah. Or certain situations he shouldn't have been. Uh, Esterly, who didn't play a ton, I'm going to give a straight out F, doesn't belong in the NHL anymore. I gave him a D, which is the worst that's grade. Great, I that's, oh, I gave one D minus. I gave one D minus. That's coming up. Okay. What else you got? Uh, Hanley, I, 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 I said D. I'm not, I'm not impressed. Uh, yeah, just it didn't. didn't. It, it, that's almost an NA for me. Yeah. D Simone, I. Well, he was traded, wasn't he? He was. Oh, no, he was. He, yes, he was. Well, no, he wasn't traded. Whatever happened to him? I can't even remember. He wound up somewhere. Yeah, he went to Jersey. Remember, he got traded in New Jersey. Oh, okay. We'll scratch him off those. How, what, what deal was that? He got claimed off waivers. He got claimed off waivers. Oh, uh, claim. Yeah, that's what it was. Okay. Anyway, so, it doesn't matter. Okay, let's get to the other ones that Slovyov. Hardly any games. I, I think he was fine. I think we got some upside there. Kind of tough to grade him with that minimal amount of games, but definitely some upside there. Yeah, he's, he's somewhere in the C plus B minus range. He was fine. Yep. yep. Uh, Braden Pahal. I gave him a B. I, I like. I like what he brings. I really do. I think this I guy think feels he, he made the most of his opportunity to be a regular in the NHL. I really liked his game. I think he's a, he's a, he's a five six for us next year. I do. I think he is. Yep. I agree hundred percent. Miramanov. Oh, oodles of potential. Uh, struggled a little bit, but man, he showed really well in other aspects too. So um, I'm excited about him going to training camp. I'll give him a B minus. Yeah, I'm there. I got. I gave him a, a, a high C. I, 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 I think he's got all kinds of upside. Um, I got to yeah, look tons, at. Tons. I kind of look at him as one of those guys. that's like, all right, show me what you can do in the off season as you heal. And when you come back to camp, you really got a spot there if you want it. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Four words will start at the top. Nazem Kadri, I gave him an A. I did, and I'm yeah, uh, I'm a critical of the man. Yeah. But yeah. he's uh, 
He earned it. He gets an A for sure. Um, I'll throw a couple out there because I want to kind of get some knee-jerk reactions out of Iman Giapani. D minus lowest grade on the on the scale. D wow, minus. I wondered that. I wondered that. Forty yeah. points, nothing to okay. scoff at, but he really. He did not turn the he, 74 games, 14 goals, 25 assists, 39 points for his salary. I'm yeah. sorry. I, I'm sorry. That's not there. And I think I think most of the fan base agrees with me in the fact that like he brought nothing to the table like he used to do on a nightly basis. I'm just not sure why you're apologizing. That's all. Um, yeah, I'm right. I'm right there, what? too. Is this part of the Flames fan group that we are that? Like when we have a guy that's been on the team for a long time, like a Backlund or a Majapani or, you know, someone like that, when we're hard on him, we kind of feel bad because he's like, oh, he's been part of the team for so long. You know, we got to get over that, that, right? Didn't, we gotta, have, didn't have a good season, makes too much money. And he should have been 50 points plus for that salary, and he wasn't. And he had lots of opportunities, so. He did. Um, he did. So you mentioned the other guy, the captain, Backlund, where you land on him. Yeah, I thought Backlund had a tough year. Um, I thought he handled the captaincy fine. I thought his play was fine. I gave him a C. His two-way play was really good. I give him a B yeah. minus. Point totals yeah. were you know were minimal though compared to what he's done in more recent years. Thirty-nine points, fifteen goals, twenty-four assists in eighty-one games. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Next, Sharon Govich. I thought that's where you're going. I give him a A minus. I gave him a B. You want to know why I gave him a B? You don't like Lego? I love I like Legos. I used to build Legos. Some. When I was a kid, see, we did get the fancy ass boxes that are pre-built freaking things for you. Like they had yeah. kids getting out of I had a box where you had to be creative. Actually, I used to build Zambonis all the time. That's cool. So I did. So why? What's it great for? Minus twenty nine, man. I can't give oh, a guy yeah. that it's minus twenty nine. I just can't. Yeah, I get that. But obviously, a lot of that's out of his hands. But scored thirty plus goals, yeah. made the Tafoli trade look good for the most part. But for sure, and I hope to hell he's with the Flames for a while because he gives an offensive punch that we so desperately need. Oh yeah, phenomenal shot. Um, Huberto, C minus. Yeah. I mean, we saw better. 52 I'll give him a, Yeah, I'll give him a C. Uh, he was much better in the second half, but that's no excuse. He, he floundered for half the season again. It's like, man, you can't do that. you gotta, no. you got to get it together. Yeah, he, he is working in the right direction, though. I will give him that. He's, 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 he's yeah, but every year he has to get older, too, right? So, oh, I don't know. Yeah, it's going to be a scary one. I'm actually wearing a Huberto t-shirt. I couldn't tell you why, but anyway. Was it on the clearance rack? <laughs> yes, it was. That's not a joke. It actually was. <laughs> oh, that's a shot. Oh, man. Uh, uh, let's go, Coleman. Ooh, well, okay. Oh, okay. where's he going? He, he tapered off big time in the last few weeks of the season, I felt. So, A minus. He wasn't well, A, but. I gave him an A. I did. I liked his play. Oh, he had a great season, best of his career in many respects, but he just he couldn't keep his foot on the floor the whole season is how it felt to me in those last two weeks. Not that it would have mattered because at that point they were pretty well cooked anyway, but yeah. Yeah, I good year though. Boy, good year. Huge. I, yeah, he huge. shows up every night for them. I mean, I mean, I know I agree with you, tailed at the end. Um yep. but man, oh, he's everything you want in a two way player. Everything you want. That that contract has aged very, very well. Yes. That yeah. might actually be the best contract Brad Tree Living gave out in hindsight. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah, that's not you're probably right. You're probably yeah. right. I will see how it goes another year or two. But yeah. Keep rolling through the forwards. Uh let's go with Connor Zari. Zari. Uh he was oh, man. It's hard to grade him because he was such a surprise. I, I give him an A. I gave a him a B. Trouble there. Game would yeah. be, I love it. I did, I was pretty sparse on the A's though. I only gave a couple A's. Kadri, Coleman, I, and we girl were the only my only A's. So uh, what what was lacking in Zari's game? Was it the bit of injury time or just adjusting the NHL? Cold stretch? What what was it? 
he kind of got dealt a bad hand. He didn't get into the league right away, so he missed games in the start. Then he went out with an injury. It was a little slow coming back, but once he got it rolling, uh, I, I, I like him. I, I like him. I have, I, 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 I really look forward to watching him next year. I, I, yeah, I, I, I pray too. there's not a sophomore slump because I, I really like what I saw this year. Well, I have ample opportunity. That's for sure. Yeah. Kuzmenko. I uh, gave him a B. Yeah. I, love, I like it, man. I like he brings another aspect. Uh, I, I don't know what his future holds in Calgary. He played 28 games here, fired off 24 points. He had a stretch that was really, really tough out of the gate. And boy, once he started scoring, the man can score. Uh, He's the most player skilled player we have. The most skilled yeah. player on the team. So Super fun to watch. Super fun to watch. And we need that. And so, yeah. I, I give him... Uh, He'll get a B plus. He's a little defensively leaves you wanting and effort sometimes, but man, yep. he's skilled. Oof. I did see he changed agents this week. Yeah. Yeah. To, the, new, talk about that to the Newport group, I believe. Does does yeah. that change things at all in his future in Calgary? Do you think? Or are we just paranoid and reading into shit? I don't think it changes his future in Calgary. It just, you know, I think he knows he has a lot of options on the table. So obviously he felt a reason to move on from his previous representation and um but for us, I don't think it changed anything. I still think he's going to be around till the trade deadline next year. I do too. Yep. We'll see. Martin Pospisil. Another huge surprise, even more so than Zari. I'm going to give him B plus. I gave him a B and I was going to give him an A, but his some of his stupid plays, I can't give an A. But I love yeah. that. No, he's going to... He, no, he plays on that line. He just hasn't quite found it yet. He crossed it a few too many times and cost his team as a result and cost himself. Um, great he's season all around. He's going to find it, don't you think? Oh, yeah. But it's hard, too, because he has, you know, with his concussion history, like he has to be careful, but still be effective. And I mean, his speed was surprising. His shot was mm-hmm. surprising. Um, but yeah, I think, and, you know, he's going to be a perennial 40 plus point player if he can stay healthy and annoy the shit out of everyone. He is a bright spot on the team that needed that annoyance factor. And, he, and, he and he's brought killing it at the world championships too. Yes, he, he is. Uh, yeah, he is. He's really, really, really doing well. Uh, let me see what I saw. I read, I wrote down here. He had three assists and a roughing minor in Slovakia's OT win over the U S. So in the first three games, I, I didn't see how he did today, but in the first three games, he had two goals, four assists and three penalties. Um, Slovakia is looking good. Yeah, uh, just lighten up the score sheet. He was. How have you heard? Is how's Maja Pani doing? Have you heard anything there? That he was wearing a letter, and that was it. I've hardly paid any attention to that tournament, though. I I, I hate that tournament, so I never follow it. So yeah, I'm just. I weird. honestly, I'm not lying though. The consolation gonna, prize for the teams that didn't make the playoffs. I'm not a fan. I'm gonna be pissed off if Maja Pani has a good tournament. I'm gonna be pissed. I'm gonna be pissed, pissed. Well, we're gonna talk about that on the next show for sure. I, I am. He okay. Moving on. Uh, AJ Greer. B. I gave him a, a little bit more. A little bit more than you'd hope from an injury really derailed him, but yep. just, that was a solid pickup. Yep, I think it's a solid pickup. We'll see what happens. I, I would not be upset if we resigned him for a year. Um, it just better be at a good price for a short term. Yeah. Uh, Matthew Coronado. Mm, C. I expected more. I gave him a D. He didn't push Absolutely. the needle at all. No, I'm not no. saying he still won't. I'm not writing him off. For no reason am I saying that. No, no. He, he didn't push the needle like both me and you expected him to do. Yep. No, I always think about that power play goal against Pittsburgh and how exciting it was, and he just didn't do a thing. And no. he was good for the Wranglers uh, for the most part, but, you know, it'll be another one big, you know, a lot of opportunity in training camp, like we said. So we'll see. Dryden Hunt. Eh, who cares? That's what I said, too. I gave him. A he's, like a, he's like a C. Like he just he, he he's blocking somebody else from taking a roster spot. He's got way more potential than he does. You know, but, I mean, for a team in transition, what we're transitioning to, I can't really say at this point. Um, he's fine. He's absolutely fine. Just I've already talked more about Dryden Hunt in this podcast than I care to for the rest of my life. So Rooney, better than I expected. B minus. Yeah. Uh, that's yeah, what I he, gave. Pissed me, he pissed me off because he proved me wrong, and I hate when people do that. 
I gave him a B just because he did. He kind of proved me wrong too. And like, if he centered our fourth line next year, I, I'd be fine with that. I really would. Oh yeah, he was great on the faceoffs. He he got quicker in the prior off season. Yeah. Um. He that contract made zero sense when he signed it. Um. But he actually is ticked up to kind of earning around a million bucks. You know, in in yep. my unprofessional does not matter opinion. <laughs> yeah, I I agree. Uh, yeah. Jacob Pelke. Uh, lost season. I don't. I'm just gonna na him. I, I don't think it's fair to value him. Like when he came back with a shoulder injury, he just wasn't the same. I think he needs another summer to build up the strength in his shoulder. And if I rated him, it wouldn't be very high. But I don't think it's fair to because that season, much like Jeremy Poirier, as I said earlier, just got wiped out. Fair enough. Fair enough. Last guy, Walker Doer. D. I came an F. I it's he came an F. You failed him. I didn't think you failed anyone. I didn't think I did until I read the lower on my list. Um, <laughs> Fell off a cliff. I, I don't understand. I had such high hopes for him, and, I, and I'm I'm not fully ready to write him off yet. But no, no, no. I mean, no. That, I mean we all it, that happens to everybody, right? But it's well, what do you? How do you? How do you give the guy? Like, he didn't do anything. No, and when oh, when he didn't, oh, just very frustrating. Gosh. When he played, he was ineffective. Otherwise, he didn't play. It was that simple. Very frustrating. Yeah. Uh, that's it for grades. Let's talk about other flame stuff. So this week, uh, flames front office had some changes as uh, president CEO, John Bean steps down after 14 and a half years. Uh, what, cha- what, what happens now? What changes with this? Anything, nothing. No, I still think they're trying to find the public relations persona that they had in the uh, the late Ken King, right? Yeah, I I, did, I wasn't in terms of in front of a podium. I was not a fan of John Bean at all. No, I, I agree. Across, I thought he came across extremely ingenuine and ignorant of the realities of the state of the franchise, the market that they're in. Like he just, I yeah, the, the less the less public facing role he has, the better. He he was very disappointing. And what little interactions I saw that he was a part of. Yeah, I, I would agree. I um, yeah. I think that, I think there'll be a definite upgrade, and and I think that's a good thing. So, yeah. Uh, one thing that we have not talked about since we were last on the show, um, NHL draft lottery took place uh, a week and a half ago now, almost two yep. weeks. Ago. And uh, Calgary landed where we expected at nine. We had a five percent chance. Um, at number one, and we ended up exactly the order went exactly like the percentages. I don't know if that means it's rigged. Um, uh, I just there's not enough variation in it. I mean, everybody like it just <laughs> it's no wonder teams suppose. I mean, everybody says that they don't actually tank, and I like to believe that they don't, but I mean, come on, like, there's gonna be more to it than that. You know, we they, we need to adopt my theory. Do you ever hear my theory on this? I think so, but remind me the team finishes the team finishing the first out of the playoffs so the 17th team gets the number one draft pick or for those that don't like the idea i'd amend that to say a much higher chance than number one draft pick okay so you you flip-flop the percentages the opposite direction yeah because here's why here's what you do you can keep feeding teams like buffalo number one picks and they get them they waste them right you give a team on the on the on the fringe a number one pick that moves them up into the playoffs, moves somebody down, keeps cycling that through. Yep. People can say, "Well, what about the teams that are really bad? They're never going to number one pick. Get better." Yep. Because Buffalo's proof, and quite honestly, Edmonton for quite some time also, that number one number one picks don't equal success guaranteed. It just this isn't yep. the NBA. I'm sorry. It's. it's <laughs> No, I agree. I think it has to change. You know, that's one of the many things the league should be looking at because if you want real, true, honest parity, you have to revise that. Like there San Jose is- was an absolute tire fire and backed themselves into a, to a corner and they got rewarded for it. I don't agree with that. I'm with you. I, I, I'm with you. And I also think it puts number one draft picks in a difficult situation where they're like, oh, great. Now I got to be the savior. Yeah. That's yeah, I don't know if that's true happen. either, right? I don't know. I just whatever the case, because I'm not a fan of extremes, whether it's in politics or sports or anything else. The system, it's it really is the haves and have nots, and I just 
I think they need to fix that. Yep, I, I'm with you. In a different sense oh. than how it used to be, used to all be about money. Now it's about asset management. It's like you can't keep rewarding shitty asset management. Oh, you can't. You can't. So we picked ninth. I looked at the last 15 years of number nine picks. There's some pretty good ones in there. Jacob Truba, <laughs> O'Horvat, Horvat, Nikolai Ehlers, Timo Meyer. Yep. Trevor, no, Trevor's egress would be one of my argue with me on that one. Marco Rossi, Nate Danielson. There's some. There's some good picks at nine. So this is really wasn't enough a ninth pick. I didn't go back that far. I went back to 2010. I think he was ninth. What, what was Sam Bennett? Fourth. Fourth. Yeah, highest we ever picked. Not that I'll rub that in, but anyway. Um, no, it's a good pick. I I wouldn't be surprised if they tried to move up just to have a chance to draft TJ Ginla, but um, okay. Maybe, so I, the, the listeners really want to hear us talk about this. I know they do. I, where do you really feel about that? Is this a good thing or a bad thing? Oh, he's a fantastic hockey player. I mean, in terms of his ceiling, who the hell knows? But I think from a marketing standpoint and giving people hope, I mean, it's kind of, especially in marketing, it's, it's kind of the right play. Because I don't think there's going to be, if he's available at nine, I don't know if he's a better player available, right? I, I, would, I would agree with that. So that does help the fact, right? Now, if we yeah. were picking three and we picked him, I might be like, wait a minute. That'd be a little... Oh. No, we're, we're in a prime position to draft him or move up ever so slightly. And it's not like we don't have some draft picks and some prospects. Like, we could throw in a little bit of a sweetener and move up a spot or two to get... Because once the first two picks fall, you're going to know who's likely to take him. You're going to be talking to that table and you're probably going to try to make a deal to move up and in all likelihood, you can pull it off. So, be interesting to see. Look forward I'm to watching. Worried, I, I am worried about one thing on this. Like, I love the feel-good story. And it, it's kind of like, okay, you remember when we had to play Edmonton in the playoffs a couple of years ago? I no, so I don't remember at all. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I had Remind so many, me. I had so many people say to me, well, do you want to play Edmonton? I said, well, fuck, I want to play Edmonton if I know we're going to win. If we're going to lose, no, I don't want to play Edmonton, right? But there's no guarantees in this. So, like, I'm not willing to throw down my poker cards. I don't want to play that, <laughs> right? Yeah. It's kind yeah. of like the TJ Ginla thing. Like, if I knew this is going to work out, like, yeah, let's do it. Like, it's a feel good story. I love feel good stories. Yeah, but uh, what, what does work? What does work out? He's not going to score 96 points or 98 points like his old man did. How do we know that? I don't think that he is, just based on his style of play and his trajectory. I think he's going to settle into being a really strong two way 60 point player. That's okay. my, my guess. And maybe I'm wrong, you know? And, you know, drafting's a. Shit, it's a crap shoot, isn't it? Well, of course it is. You're talking about hundreds and hundreds of kids with different brains between the ears, first and foremost. Never mind injuries, skill sets, developmental programs, coaching decisions. Like, yeah, it's a gamble. And that's where your player development is so important, right? I think it is a, a, a good. F- <laughs> so, our local junior team has had its fair share of uh, players who's fathers have been nhl players yeah and i've always when talking with the the owner of the of the team said that the, having that pedigree those kids learn things that other kids don't yeah that can know. make them a little better hockey player right mm-hmm. it's it, having him as part of that it, having him on the, having a Ginla on the team puts a ton of pressure on him, but also opens a door for some wonderful things. Yeah, absolutely. And I think if any one pro or prospective pro hockey player could learn a lot from how to be about how to be a pro from their father, there's nobody better than Jerome Ginla. He's the, still talked about as the consummate pro in the NHL, the best ambassador, one of the best ambassadors of sports has ever had. Yeah, I I, I agree. I, I totally agree. And, and I think at this point, right now, the franchise, whether they want to admit it or not, and this is one of the things I didn't like about John Bean, is that, again, his comments seem so ingenuine. He's talking about you know how great certain things were, and we all knew none of them were that great. Um, I think there's, there's something to be said for selling hope to us as fans of the Flames right now. We kind of need that. Yeah. You know? right. And if it, doesn't, if, it doesn't, if it doesn't pan out for some reason, and God knows there's all kinds of reasons why it wouldn't, at least it gives us hope for a little while. And by the point that maybe it didn't pan out, 
we're in a different spot than we are now. It still buys you time to make other decisions and work your way forward, wherever that direction might be. So um, it, it's know, what I hope happens during the draft, but if he'd also be out. potentially stepping into the league about new arena time too. I was just thinking of that actually. Yeah. 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 Everything about it lines up beautifully. And, and I think, I think it's not just the bloodlines from a skill perspective, but I mean, in terms of you, a guy you want in your locker room, a guy with a great attitude and a fierce, fierce competitor, 100%, that's the guy you want. So when we didn't get the number one pick, which I don't know why I'm like, oh, shoot, we didn't get the number one pick. We're a freaking 5% chance. Like, I shouldn't yeah. be disappointed at all. But San Jose yeah. gets it, and I, I automatically start going through X, and I, and I find our X factor, which – made me laugh because there might be i don't know I'll, I'll show you famous goal horn says if i were the san jose sharks i'd trade this pick and i don't know why i almost feel like they could make a haul for this pick they could help them <laughs> in more ways than one player can Oh, they need help everywhere. They're an absolute. That's what I'm disaster. saying. They need so much help. So it, it, when I first saw this tweet, I was like, "This guy is crazy." And then I thought about it. And I'm like, "Geez, no, this is not crazy." But the thing is, Celebrini is much more of a sure thing than any trade you're likely to be able to make, right? Do you really think he is? Yeah. What are you going to get for him? That's really going to move this franchise ahead. That's not none. It's not going to be a franchise player because you may as well draft the one you're going to draft, right? Could you get two firsts for this? Uh, yeah, but what are the first going to be? Who knows, right? I know, but I mean, who if, they're knows? First, if they're first, if they're first in this year's draft, I mean, it's still, like you said earlier, it's just too much of a crapshoot, in my opinion. Yeah, but I'd rather have two rolls at it than one because we're still not even sure. I mean, is Celebrini a lock on being a superstar in the league? I don't know that. I can't answer. I that. think he's locked. It seems to be that he's a lock to be a star in the league, but is he on the level of a Bedar McDavid or Crosby? No, not even close. maybe, but I can't see it. You know, we haven't heard near enough about him to indicate that's the case. So yeah, I, I mean, I consider trading it, but it have to be a really good trade that gets me a prospect at virtually every position. If I'm the sharks. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Hey, it's interesting though. It's it's because nobody ever thinks of that, right? No, I just started thinking after I saw that, and I know, you know, when the when the regular season ends, Flames Twitter quiets, right? I mean, and I and I, I mean, what am I going to put on there for an X factor uh, that we were disappointed we didn't get the number one pick, which we all knew we weren't going to get? So I saw this, and I'm like, gosh, this this is a, something to think about, actually. So no, that's exactly this. Yeah, being it's, instead, it's time you're taking you famous goal horns for. Uh, which is kind of yeah, an interesting. Let's appreciate it. Very Twitter thoughtful. Handle. Very thoughtful. Yeah. 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 So let's talk playoff hockey before we get out of here. Uh, what do you? What, what series are you most engaged in, and who are you cheering for? Uh, my dad's a Bruins fan. And oh. Like nah. You know, it's like oh, half your team plays for Florida. Half your old team plays for Florida. It's like I don't look at it that way. I don't really care. Um. So yeah, dad's a Bruins fan, so kind of for them. Uh, yeah. Chris Tanev in Dallas. Yep, I'm kind of cheering there. Uh, Edmonton and Vancouver, the more I witness from both those fan bases, the more I hope they just destroy each other. Although I am enjoying Nikita Zadorov, you know, his playoff has been just immaculate, so good for him. You know what I like? You know, I got, that. that is the series I'm most engaged in, right? And God, uh i get i watch i'm i'm excited to watch it every night and i get so frustrated because i hate team, both teams so bad right and everybody asks me well th don't you hate that those two teams the worst i'm like yeah well who are you cheering for and i and i hate to admit this but i'm actually cheering for edmonton and here's why i just want to get it out of their freaking system and not that i want them to win the stanley cup i don't want that I just want them to get through Vancouver, right? Because Vancouver annoys the shit out of me. Their fan base are, are lunatics. I have friends. I have quite a few friends that are Canucks fans, and they're driving me crazy right now. They text me at night after they win. Lind Holman's the door off, and I just want to text back. They both want $9 million next year, and you can't afford it. Have a nice day. <laughs> yeah, but if they win a capital, I'll be worth it. Not that I see that happening, but anyway. I don't see that happening, but 
I think I think you're going to see Dallas and uh, New York in the final. Up until last night's game, do you know that uh, Zadorov and Lindholm had 36 percent of the Canucks playoff goals? I heard that. That's a wild stat. Right, it's wild stat. Anyway, hopefully next year we're talking about playoffs in Calgary. But we shall see. I hope so. But what really, if we're Flame fans, we should be cheering for Dallas because that benefits us. Uh, yeah. Because then we get a third round. How do you not cheer? How do you not cheer for Christina? Even if we didn't get a pick up, another pick up. It, it, yeah, exactly. And then the Vegas thing that already fell through, so that's not happening. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 Well, let's do this again in a few weeks, shall we? Yeah, we will. Uh, we will be back. Actually, yeah, it'll be a couple weeks. It'll be the first week of June. We're going to have a Flames fan pool poll that we're going to do. Uh, we'll talk NHL playoffs. And then uh, the end of June is busy with the draft. Um, some different things with the awards and the draft review. And then free agency gets July. A couple shows during the off season. Yeah, we're going to we have a busy slate here for example. Yeah, lots are coming up. Lots going to be happening for sure. So stay tuned. Stay tuned, Flames fans. We will be back in a couple weeks talking Flames hockey on Flames Unfiltered. Thanks for listening to Flames Unfiltered with Brad Burud and Kyle Lewis. Your source for unfiltered Calgary Flames hockey talk. Keep it locked on flamesunfiltered.ca. Subscribe where you get all your podcasts to never miss an episode. Flames Hockey Talk every week presented by Inside Edge Hockey Media Group.